Now, moving to the first speaker, uh, he's Christopher Bedo, a well-known face at the State of the Map conferences. Chris works uh, at uh, Meta. He is a data analyst and works on OpenStreetMap, of course, and Mapillary. Chris, floor is yours. All right. So I'm going to kick off. This is going to be a pretty good amount of information that uh, will be jam-packed in here. So we'll dive right in. I'm going to talk about mapping a small town. Uh, so is anyone here from a small town, live in a small town, a rural area? And anyone live in a big city? And anyone on like a boat or an island by yourself? Anything? Nowhere in between? So I think small town mapping can translate really to big city, and we'll get into why at the end. Um, but just to start, so what this is, is this is a full test of mapping and AI tools plus open data. And the idea here was to use these different tools that you see on the screen, Rapid for editing the map, QGIS for some data analysis, JOSM also for more advanced editing, and Mapillary for image collection, to take a map that really didn't have any great base map data on it and turn it into something fantastic. So I did this back in the US. Uh, this is a town near where I grew up called Absorki, Montana. Uh, it has a very small population, uh, just a few bars, grocery stores, and one supermarket. Uh, it has a lot of the other basic amenities, churches, schools. And when I first looked at it in 2020, it was very lightly mapped. Almost no buildings, very few POIs. And there was some mapillary imagery on the main street, but most of that was either mine uh, or for one of our other top users, JB. So I took this area and I traced a line around it, drawing the area of interest. This is what I defined as kind of the city boundary. So I looked at a few different data sources you can see here. A map with AI buildings, that's the Microsoft building data set. Also the map with AI roads data set, extracted from satellite imagery. And from Mapillary, the imagery as well as the map features and the traffic signs. And finally, just the satellite imagery, which people rely on worldwide for tracing things and adding to OpenStreetMap. So I had a lot of goals, 15 of them listed here, but you can kind of compress these down into almost everything you can think of that you want to add to the map, especially when none of it exists yet. So it starts with buildings, whether that's the AI buildings, tracing stray ones. I wanted to put Mapillary on every street, add infrastructure, POIs, parking, parks, uh, just anything you can think of. So taking a look at the, the journey itself, I drove about one hour. So from my hometown out into this more rural area, here's my mapping vehicle. So inside the car, I was using OSM and partly for navigation and then also as a GPS trace just to see what roads I had covered already. I had a GoPro outside the car forward facing with a magnet mount. It's nice if you keep the speed under about 50 kilometers per hour. And I used a Garmin 360 camera on the roof. So all of this made it ready for me to do some mobile mapping, collect the imagery I would need later to look at on the computer. And there's a closer look at the, the Garmin camera. So it's a nice 360. There's many other 360 cameras and you can read up on the Mapillary blog for recommendations. So I used the Mapillary desktop uploader. Here's the download link for that. Uh, very easy to drag and drop your imagery onto it. So from my GoPro and 360, I just plugged them into my computer and dragged the imagery into the uploader. And it shows me where that imagery is located before I upload. So there was about 2,000 images from the 360 camera. Really not too many for such a small town. So that uploaded really quickly. And I was able to see my traces on mapillary.com. And next, I went into Map with AI. So using the Rapid Editor, uh, again, the URL is here at the bottom. I went in. And the main thing I wanted to focus on was the building data set. The roads are available, but that was one thing that was decently well mapped, although I added a few things such as driveways and some forest roads. So with the buildings, there was a pretty key workflow for me, which was either accepting the feature, 
or ignoring the feature or copying and pasting. So in the rapid workflow, you'll get that accept or ignore button on the left side for each one of these map with AI buildings. And a lot of time there's buildings that just weren't visible in the satellite imagery that was used. Sometimes they were under trees, sometimes they're new construction. So what I like to do was take an existing building, copy and paste it, and then adjust the geometry to fit the new one. Uh, and overall, what was very important was to make sure that any building I accepted from that layer, I was adding extra detail to it, uh, making sure to rotate it to align correctly with the base map, and also checking around trees, which often were blocking the satellite, just depending on time of year or the changing environment. So I got all the buildings done, and really quickly the map started to look a lot more impressive. Uh, just adding buildings alone really kind of brings things to life uh, a lot better than it looks with just roads on the map. And in parallel, the same time I was mapping buildings, I started looking at the land cover. So one thing that's very easy to do, especially in the US, is mapping parking lots. The geometry is incredibly simple. Sometimes it's just a big square. And it's everywhere and often very unmapped. I think OpenStreetMap probably doesn't get enough credit for how great the parking lot data set can be in certain areas, as well as how much potential it has to be the only map database that has a great amount of parking data. Uh, it's very rare in other commercial maps. And these parking lots will be public or private. Sometimes there's a fee, and you can mark them also as customers only for the access. Uh, so a lot of time for a supermarket, it will be intended only for people visiting that supermarket. That's great to mark in the attributes. Other land cover things can be like sports facilities. Tennis courts are very easy to spot. Just a single polygon, again, public or private sometimes. Swimming pools as well. Uh, so there's the city swimming pool. I was able to mark that as public and mark the operator attribute as the city. And there's also parking nearby it. So you get a lot of land cover added really quickly here. More sports facilities. So uh, there was a running track. I was able to trace as a line. The football field, uh, the bleachers, the seating, sheds around the stadium for storage. I could get the name of the stadium uh, from driving near there. So it's usually named after someone at uh, a school in the US. And then nearby also is farmland. And if you're there mapping in that town, you can, if you have a good eye, spot if it's corn or wheat or something else that you might know that others may not recognize that easily. Moving to the more natural features, I was also able to trace a lot of the forest cover. So for me, this was very simple in the small town, but I've seen also some very intricate versions of this, especially in the US. Uh, I think Switzerland has some incredible uh, tracing as well of the, the forest covers. Uh, but again, it adds a lot to the base map. You can also add small things like making sure the river shape is very detailed. Uh, for me, I was able to add the river encircling this small island. It wasn't there before. And again, if you're actually there visiting the site, you can take a look for other things. You can find wetland, cliffs next to a river, uh, beaches, or any access to the water. So a lot of that also really brings to life the base map. So I got the land cover done. I have the buildings. I have the map array. So what's next? I wanted to go into some of the pedestrian features. So Mapillary detects sidewalks automatically. You can find it on the Mapillary API. You can search through an area for images, then filter through which ones contain sidewalks. So when I first did this, it looked like Mapillary was saying almost every street had sidewalks on them. It might be true, but I knew in that town that's not quite accurate. And the important thing there is Mapillary detects very small details. So any piece of pavement is potentially sidewalk. If I move the threshold up for say 10% of a photo has to be sidewalk. Then I got uh, a lot more focus just on the main streets. And that made it easy for me to have an idea of where the sidewalks were. And then I could go in and manually trace it. So in the image, I can kind of get the context on the ground. From the satellite, I can also see the sidewalks really easily. And just the same for crosswalks. If the paint is very fresh, you can see it uh, from the air. And Mapillary also detects these and places a point 
that helps you understand where the node should be placed in the road for the, the crosswalk. So I did map these as separate ways. That makes it routable for a pedestrian routing system. Uh, instead of just marking an attribute on the road saying that sidewalk is left, right, or both. Uh, so for me, I prefer to map it that way to get it as detailed as possible. And one of the important parts here, again, just like buildings, is satellite just can't see through those trees. And in this case, I could use MapLary to confirm the presence of sidewalks, while with the satellite, I could see how far away from the road center it should be based on snippets of sidewalk I could see in between. So it helped me just map this continuous system of sidewalks uh, along the main roads in the town. Moving into utilities, I also was able to use MapLary's detected utility poles. So this is something you see in other projects, such as what youth mappers have been doing in Sierra Leone. You can use the points detected by MapLary, again, as a guide, and you're able to check the imagery for verification. So especially in something that's more spacious, like these smaller towns in the US, it's easy to know what street corner or what house a utility pole is near, trace the MapLary point, and add it to the map. You can also go into a lot more detail if you're interested in that, using the imagery to see which wires connect between different poles. So you could actually map an actual power grid network if that's what you're going for. Uh, I didn't go that far. That's pretty time consuming, but it's definitely been done uh, again in other projects. And for confirming the, the presence of utility poles, you can also often see the shadow in the satellite imagery if it's taken on a bright and sunny day. And that helps you confirm with the MapLoy point if it's in roughly the right position. To get more details on the utility poles, uh, as well as things like street lamps, I switched over to Jossum. Uh, so the MapLoy plugin has something called Smart Edit Mode. So below where the image is visible here, you can scroll down and hit a check mark to enable that mode. And then it allows you to filter out the MapLoy features. So I turned on sometimes just the utility poles, and then I could click them, and I'll get a, a dialog that asks me if I want to add it to the map. So it's evolved a little bit since I took this screenshot. Um, the latest version, I think as of two or three days ago, uh, is going to give you kind of a purple highlight behind that data to make it easier to see. And you can click Add or Remove. And Remove is even going to ask you for a reason, like a duplicate or a false positive. Here's also a fire hydrant, similar workflow. Uh, these are very easily detected on MapLary. You can click Add. And then you can fill in some of the tag details again, like the type being a pillar and the color as yellow. Traffic signs are also a huge data set from Mapillary. Uh, there's a lot you can do with these from checking the speed limits against roads. There's some automated workflows that really check out there. Um, Osmos also borrows from the Mapillary data set to check against OpenStreetMap for conflicts. So conflicting uh, speed limit values or roads with no speed limit, but MapLoy data available. For me, I was just doing this manually, and stop signs are one of the ones that I find a very easy win. So I can see roughly where it's supposed to be. I can pull up the imagery of the stop, right, uh, stop sign, and I can see then that it's uh, facing a certain direction, mark it in the map that way. So I went back to the rapid editor to do this. And finally, one of the, the more interesting things that's very time consuming, uh, requires a lot of detail, but I think is very rewarding and a lot of fun, is adding points of interest to the map. So in general, you can turn on the MapLoy imagery layer after spending, you know, in my case, maybe 20 minutes driving all the streets in this small town. And then you can spend hours going through it step by step in the imagery. And you can look at things like the business name. Uh, in this case, you can see this real estate office has a phone number, pretty easy for me to read. Uh, you can zoom in on the house numbers, and you can also tell things like accessibility. Uh, it's very easy to see if something has wheelchair access uh, in this type of business. And finally, you can use kind of information about this to find open data on the web. So for me, I went to the Chamber of Commerce website for the town. Uh, so that's just kind of a civic organization that lists all the local businesses. And I could find even more data there, so websites, uh, opening hours, and things like this. Mapillary also detects the signs on shops. 
So I was able to download all of these from the Mapillary API. I opened these in QJS and ran a uh, DB scan clustering algorithm on it. And I found that you can see here in the map the green cluster, the purple cluster, and the orange cluster. And those are my three kind of main um, cluster kernels. And then the pink ones are just outliers. So what it told me is that I could see kind of like the main busy areas, like areas of interest inside of the, the small town. So I automatically had a, just did a bounding box around these different sections. And then I overlaid this on the map inside of Rapid. And based on those mapillary street sign densities and based on the other POIs that were already on the map or that I'd added from the imagery, I determined that I could mark these areas as retail land use. So it's a great way also to, on a base map, let the user know where things like shopping and businesses are clustered. So with that, the mapping was all done. I had a great looking base map in the end. Uh, it really looked a lot better than when I started. And I would say it probably took me a full, uh, just a full day to do that. So really my conclusion taking away from that is that one mapper can have quite a big impact. Uh, so just me as one person, I was able to map a small town. I knew how to use all these tools that could save me time and effort and really help me get details that I just wouldn't have the time or ability to get otherwise. And I think this translates beyond small towns. One person can map a neighborhood in a city. Uh, if you have a dozen people living in a, a rather large city, in a few weeks or months, it can actually be extremely detailed uh, just from someone taking a local interest. So it really applies everywhere. And I think Mapillary served me as an excellent tool, just the the aspect of being able to capture on the go. Uh, I didn't have to slowly walk and take notes, uh, constantly interrupt, interrupt my workflow. Instead, I could just pass through the town, take that imagery home, upload it, and then sit down and do the work later. So it allowed me to get a lot more focused time um, and have the ability to go back and review what I had mapped rather than the pressure to do it all on the spot. And finally, uh, with the rapid tool and map with AI data sets. It was just a great time saver once again. Uh, so using the AI data sets from Mapillary, the Microsoft buildings, these were something that allowed me to just quickly move through that data, validate it or adjust and reuse it as needed. And I always did have the opportunity to take that and add more detail. So for me, it just gave me a foundation to work with and allowed me to make a big uh, improvement on those data sets for what I merged into OpenStreetMap. I think the next steps are just looking at all these tools as the future of craft mapping. Uh, personally, I love to map really small details. I think my change sets have a lot of trash bins and water fountains and very small items. Uh, so I often run out of the big things to map and drill down on those details. And you can do a lot of this using uh, these machine learning based tools. I, one thing I wish I had was a drone. Um, I have one and had issues connecting it to the app on my phone to have it run a mission. Uh, but if I had had that set up and had good weather, then I would have gladly also had um, captured imagery for open aerial map. Um, I think the tasking manager and map with AI is also a really powerful way of organizing across larger scales, like a big city, and getting mapping done over time rather than all in just one day. And there's a new version of that that we're working on with the Major League Hacking program that involves also measuring the mapillary coverage in different tasks. So we're hoping to push that out soon, and we have some pull requests going on it for the, uh, the open source repository. There's mapillary missions in the iPhone app for mapillary. So that's also very similar to Tasking Manager. It creates these small, about 300 by 300 meter square tasks and it coincides with areas where there's a density of POIs, where there are public transit stations and commercial and retail land use. So areas where macular imagery can really improve the POI data. Uh, and finally, some of my favorite apps to use while you're out walking around. Um, Every Door has been great for me and also Street Complete with just the, the, the questions that help you to fill in that missing data and point you toward what needs improvement. Uh, so, Really, I think all of these together are a great tool set to help you map in a lot of detail, 
to cover something the size of a town or a neighborhood really quickly. And I think at scale with whole communities, this kind of workflow uh, is a really great way to take places that are missing data and turn them into something that's fully mapped. So that's all I've got. Uh, happy to take some questions while we have time. And thanks a lot for stopping in for my talk. Thanks a lot, Chris. Great presentation. I invite the uh, audience to ask questions using Venueless. There's one question so far. Thank you for the great presentation. As you explained, Mapillary AI was able to detect utility poles, traffic signs, and sidewalks. Could Mapillary detect buildings from images as well? Yeah, Mapillary does detect uh, what it calls structure in the data set available through the API. It's an image detection, so it will tell you where images are located that contain a building structure, and it'll tell you what part of the image contains building. But it doesn't produce something yet that would be uh, telling you exactly where on the map that building is located. So it's a great data set to work with if you want to just understand generally what's in an area, and that you can also download and expand yourself into something more specific. Thank you. We have another question. Great work. How many days did you spend mapping the town at this level? Uh, so for me, it was really one day. I think I started in the morning uh, with the road trip out there, and uh, by evening time, I was done with the entire mapping project. So probably eight to 10 hours. Which is impressive. Question from the audience. Yeah. Uh, thank you, uh, Christopher. Uh, I think a uh, little small town, but uh, a lot of uh, effort. Uh, I have a specific question regarding the Mapillary API, because uh, you are demonstrating that it's possible to use Mapillary to map the street, um, the set work, as well as some POIs. But I have a question that um, did Mapillary, uh, Mapillary also record the camera parameters, for example, like the camera orientations? Because I also use Mapillary. Currently, we, we can get the image key and the sequence key. Uh, although, like with the sequence, you can somehow tell like uh, whether that's is in front of you or behind of you. But uh, still, if you want to connect with the specific side of street uh, set work, it might be possible to uh, it might be helpful to get the uh, camera parameters. And I have uh, like seconds of follow-up questions might be, have you also think about to link the mapillary with some OSM building footprints, like which OSM building is in present in your specific mapillary data, because that will be really great uh, help for like OSM uh, users or even researchers to do their research. I hope you get my question. Yeah, yeah, yeah great questions. Um, your second one first. Uh, there are some buildings on OpenStreetMap that have a mapillary image key attached to them. Uh, so the, I think the Netherlands Red Cross team was working in Malawi, I believe, to, to do exactly this. So they associated some mapillary images with the buildings there. Uh, also, there's many other objects. So coming through pick for review and other similar tools, um, or even if you add an object from Mapillary through JOSM, it will attach the image key to it. So there's some examples of that, but it's not something that we automatically do. It's very easy to do with, for example, the Mapillary Python SDK. You can input a longitude and latitude, like the building centroid, and get images back that are facing it. And on the Mapillary API side, related to that, every image that you request, you have the option to specify the fields you would like in the API response. So you can get the camera angle. You can also get the parameters. Um, so that includes the, the tilt, the roll, and the pitch, um, the rotation. So those, those three parameters are also in there. And you can also actually request things like the structure for motion cluster and the, get the point cloud back as well. So if you check the Mapillary API documentation, you can see a list of the actual parameters you can get back. Thanks, Chris. We have one last question from Venulist. I would ask you a very quick answer. Apart from buildings and roads, what other features can Mapillary be able to map? Uh, so there's a huge list, again, on, on the Mapillary website. I recommend looking at the API documentation, and you can see points and traffic signs there. Uh, 
but a few great things are just like benches, bicycle parking, street lamps, uh, shop signs, crosswalks, trash bins, and many, many more classes. So check that out. And then if you have special requests and ideas, please let us know. We're always interested to hear what people are looking to map from MapLayer. Thanks a lot, Chris. Thank you.